The 5070 Ti. The RTX 50 series also has some hidden losses that uh, Nvidia didn't want to tell us about, and a bunch of GPUs are dead. AMD just killed them. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Thursday, February 20th, 20. 25. And we're going to start off today discussing the 5070 Ti reviews that dropped yesterday because they came out and the general consensus is this is a GPU. It exists. It's real. And it's really expensive. And it doesn't make a whole lot of sense at the price point that is happening. So the reviews that came out yesterday are for the MSRP versions of these cards, which is allegedly the 749 price point. And then as hot news is dropping, we're expecting to get the reviews of the non MSRP version. So we get to see how fast it can overclock, how much headrooms on the 5070 Ti, et cetera. But the biggest problem is that despite it being a sensible 4K powerhouse for 749 and it beating an RX 7900 XTX at 749, it doesn't really exist at that price point. Now, there are some caveats to that because the Prime GPU is reviewed by a whole lot of people. I always highly recommend that you check out Video Cards Roundup of all of the different reviews. You can see that the Ventus 3X as well as the Prime are some of the more popular GPUs that were reviewed. But as of two days ago, which is prior to when the embargo lifted on these GPUs, the MSRP on that Prime GPU was actually $899, which is, I don't know if you know this, not the same number as 749. So that caused a huge uproar. Jay's Two Cents made a video about it. A lot of people kind of just were discussing how this is not at all what NVIDIA communicated. The only MSRP GPU that we were aware of was the PNY version. You see that the MSI Ventus is $910. That's the overclocked version, but I wouldn't expect that the non-overclocked version is gonna get close down to that 750. And then you got something like the Vanguard going for $1,009.99. This is just a, a, an obscene launch. However, after all of the uh, online whinging and complaining, and uh, rightfully so, Asus, like magic, dropped the price on Micro Center's website. Now, this could have been planned all along. This could have been something that they were expecting to do, but uh, Micro Center published a, a price without their a consent, maybe? I don't know. I'm sure Asus could spin this into a positive PR move somehow, but the fact of the matter is they're lining up with how every other company's pricing it, so it doesn't feel like it's actually anything exceptional, and that everybody's just kind of uh, not abiding by the price point of the 5070 Ti. It seems like it's a good GPU if you can get it for 750. It gets about 10% better performance than the 4070 STI. It gets about 15 to 20% better performance than the regular 40. 70 Ti. It's about 10 to 15 percent slower than the RTX 5080, which at 750 bucks makes a lot of sense. At a thousand and ten dollars, it makes no sense because you can allegedly get a 5080 Founders Edition for that price, which it's just, this is obscene. This generation has been nothing but frustrating in multiple avenues. You have the GPU melting, you have the high price points, not just at the actual MSRP, but then also with these third-party cards and the prices being raised after the fact. I don't know if I already said it, but the melting power connectors, that's obviously happening on the 90 class cards, reports of it happening on the 80 class cards, stock shortages, and just an overall disrespect for the gamer. I think that's that's what we've got going on right now. But you know who doesn't disrespect the gamer? Today's video is sponsor Silverstone. We're talking about their SETA H2 case. And after the SETA H2M introduced the wraparound intake design last month, in which the total front venting area is extended to the side panels, the SETA H2 now follows for those that want this great cooling design in a larger ATX and server motherboard size. Compatible with form factors up to dual CPU capable SSI EEB, this is your workstation case of choice of 2025. It boasts solid construction style of server chassis with thick high-grade steel. The SETA H2 feels super solid and will safely protect your investments inside. You can install up to 15 drives, any graphics card basically, any CPU coolers, up to dual 420 millimeter AIOs, and so the possibilities are limitless. You can check out the SETA H2 from Silverstone today via the link in the description below. Huge thank you to Silverstone for sponsoring today's video. But the 50 70 Ti isn't the only brand new piece of technology on the block. Apple also having an announcement yesterday for their SE replacement of the phone, which is their budget iPhone that they've released. It was the SE third generation prior to this at $429. And now we have the iPhone 16e 
coming in at $600. So a price jump to be sure. However, it's a complicated phone because it's essentially an iPhone 14 mixed with iPhone 16 features and having certain parts stripped, but also it has some unique things about it that make it better than the regular iPhone 16. However, with this, the face ID is now here and the action button, meaning that touch ID and the home button on the iPhone is now completely gone because the SD was the last one that had it. But the big thing that actually is getting unveiled with the 16 E, one of the things I want to talk about is that it's the first phone that Apple's released where they have vertically integrated their modem. The 4G, 5G modem on the inside of this phone is no longer Qualcomm. It was made by Apple directly, which allowed them to have higher efficiency on the phone, giving it up to 26 hours of video playback compared to the iPhone 16 because the background tasks of the actual phone with the C1 modem makes it super power efficient, making it incredible, which we're likely to see this roll out on the iPhone 17, potentially if this kind of meets what uh, Apple wants it to, or the C1 is just kind of them testing it, and then the C2 will make it into the more mainstream phones later on. But it's the cheapest phone that you can get that will allow you to do Apple intelligence, but it cannot do a whole lot of stuff. It doesn't have MagSafe. It does support wireless charging with Qi, but it doesn't have the MagSafe magnets, so you hit likely just have to get a case for that. It doesn't support the dynamic island. It doesn't have the camera control button that you find on the new iPhone 16. It doesn't have an ultra wide lens, no SIM card slot, at least here in America. No options for colors. It just has black and white. It has a one core fewer GPU, which will make it run Genshin Impact slightly slower. And it doesn't even have Wi-Fi 7, doesn't even have Wi-Fi 6E, just has Wi-Fi 6. So you're having a $200 price decrease from the iPhone 16. 16. It is a $170 price bump from the iPhone SE. However, the SE third generation was so far behind in terms of technology. I think the $599 price point is a little too high for what they're offering here, but it is a new budget phone and it means that the lightning port is now officially dead when it comes to iPhones because the iPhone 16e now has USB-C and the last holdout for that was the iPhone 14, which they killed alongside the launch of the iPhone 16 but it's not just the lightning port that's dead, it's also Humane. You know, the company that made that AI pin, the thing that overheated, didn't really work, sent all of your information to the cloud and just basically sucked at doing its job. Yeah, uh, it's gonna shut down in 10 days on February 28th, which is the exact same day that we're giving away an RTX 5090 PC over on Twitch. Go to twitch.tv forward slash UFD tech 9800X3D RTX 5090. It might overheat on you too. I mean, we cooled it as best as we could. I'm just, I'm saying that, uh, you know, the 5090 has multiple problems. That's the whole thing. Anyways, HP acquiring Humane, which gives me flashback to when they acquired Palm and then ruined everything that I loved about the Palm Pre and the Palm Pixie and WebOS. But at least in this instance, consumers aren't losing out because hardly anybody was buying this thing. They got purchased for $116 million, which is way less than the reported $1 billion that the co-founders were looking to get out of their company. They are offering refunds as long as you have purchased the device within the last 90 days. But despite you know, uh, consumers might be losing out here. Uh, it does seem like the co creators of this are the ones who are suffering the most because they have to go on to run HP's AI division. So they're just gonna be trapped in a, a new layer of hell trying to figure that all out. But in case you add a humane AI pin, it shuts down 12 p.m. PST on February 28th, which is actually the exact same time that we're giving away the PC. So shameless self-promotion on this. I, I really don't have very many good things to say. I saw this coming. I am shocked that they got $160 million. It's probably for all the patents that they purchased and the uh, talent acquisition that's going on. But the things are gonna deactivate and they can do offline features, which uh, their example in their FAQ was, it can tell you its battery level. 700 bucks, folks, $24 a month subscription. If you bought it more than 90 days ago, you don't get a refund. <laughs> and if you buy an RTX 50 series, you don't get 32-bit physics support anymore. NVIDIA kiboshing that. It's completely gone, which means the RTX 5090 runs certain games slower than the RTX 4090. So is this a huge deal? Not for anybody who plays modern games, but for anybody who goes back and plays their back catalog, deprecating the CUDA library for 32-bit operating systems is something that's happening on the 
the latest architecture. So it's for CUDA, and then thereby it's also for physics, which means that certain games are impacted by this. So you have games like Arkham City are gonna run slower on the 5090 than the 4090, but on Arkham Knight, which is the 64-bit version of physics, it's gonna run faster on the 5090. In the Reddit thread where people were talking about this, somebody tested out Borderlands 2 with the RTX 5090, and they could not crack 60 FPS because everything then has to be run by your CPU. The physics has to be processed by the processor, not the graphics card. So it just creates a situation where older games will now run worse on the RTX 50 series, something that Nvidia didn't really disclose. I read a lot of commentary on this and it appears like could NVIDIA have enabled this? Yes, the issue is software validation. They don't wanna to continue to dedicate resources for deprecated technology like 32-bit because we're no longer dealing with that in a lot of different applications as well as operating systems. They just don't wanna put the resources to it. So instead of having some hobnob solution, they are just cutting it all together. Even though likely the GPU could actually still do it, it's just software-wise not allowed to. Maybe we'll find workarounds and as time goes forward, but the RTX 50 series even worse than you thought. But Reese is better than you think, I promise. No matter how much you think of that man, he's better than that. And he's gonna save you money on the hottest tech deals. Yo, welcome back to UFD Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. Happy Thursday, guys. Hope you guys have had a good week so far. And I'll jump straight into the deals for you today, starting off with this Royal Kludge M87. With this wireless mechanical hard swappable keyboard going for only $71.99 with included promo code, making it $18 off. And then back again, we have the Corsair IQ Link H115i. With this 280 millimeter AIO CPU liquid cooler, plus Corsair's LC100 lighting panels, which are kind of like mini nano leafs for inside your PC going bundled for only $89.99, making it $80 off. And then lastly, we have this gorgeous ASRock Phantom Gaming, 31 and a half inch 4K, 240 hertz wall LED gaming monitor, which you can stop down to 1080p for 480 hertz if that's more your fancy, for only $746, making it $51 and an all time low for this specific monitor. And hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brad for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, here's the deal on the RX 9000 series. We now now have understanding that the review embargo lift will be on March 5th, the very same day that the RTX 5070 will go on sale and a day prior to when the 9000 series will go on sale as well. So that first week of March appears like it's going to be very busy for GPU reviewers having to drop both a <laughs> RTX 5070 review likely on the 4th and then the 9070 and 9070 XT reviews on the 5th. That's just going to be brutal, which like I get it's competition, but think of your local tech reviewer say something nice to them because they're going to be pulling all nighters it's going to be brutal we don't do that here at ufd tech if a video can't get done in normal work hours it just doesn't get done and we push it off we abide by a really strict nine to five schedule here because listen we got families we got we got lives to take care of outside of this so we, uh, we don't do all nighters anymore but the creators that do utmost respect it's going to be it's going to be a rough one and i got a lot of respect for the upcoming ryzen 9 x3d chips we got new geekbench scores coming out for these bad boys that are supposed to be coming out in march and they are fast. They have higher single core and multi core performance over the 7000 version, and it puts it nearly on par with the non X3D variants. So 15% single core improvement on the 9950X3D, and about the same on the 9900X3D, and then 4% multi core with that 9950X3D. So this appears to be like it's going to be faster at productivity, also fast at gaming, just kind of like the 9800X3D was, kind of uh, made it so that it didn't lose that productivity issue that was happening on the previous generations of X3D chips. But I think we're gonna have an issue when it comes to budget GPUs moving forward. We've already seen a dearth of graphics cards that come in at the $200 price point or under. They just basically aren't available unless you're looking to still pick up a GT 1030 here in 2025. Now we have another culprit to thank for that and that is the banging APU that is known as the Ryzen AI Max Plus 395 from AMD. Their latest APU that has a 16 core CPU baked into it, as well as a 40 compute unit GPU. Reviews came out for this. Uh, most of them are on the Asus ROG Flow Z13 gaming tablet, which is also technically a gaming PC. And the gaming performance on this thing is incredible. It basically goes head to head with an RTX 4060, sometimes gets up to an RTX 4070. And again, it's just in a single die. No discrete GPU being included in this. It's essentially what you would think of a, a console APU now being brought over 
to Windows and gaming PCs. I love to see this. Asus is supposed to be sending us a review unit of the Z13. I can't wait to check this out for myself. Uh, they said that they should be shipping it out this Friday, so I don't have a, an embargo lift date review on it, but we should be getting that uh, to review shortly. However, I know one of the, the counter arguments to this is that uh, despite the fact that this replaces the low end GPUs, it doesn't come in at the low end GPU price point with this laptop costing roughly $2,000. It's a very expensive thing, but it's not that it's better for the consumer to replace budget GPUs, it's better for AMD. Instead of them having to sell discrete GPUs at $150 and having essentially no profit margin, they instead can sell these cut down GPUs as an APU and then sell it for high profit margin, making it so that it's better for them overall. And the 8060S that is in this chip is absolutely incredible. We will likely see cut down versions of this come out in the future. We're supposed to get a 32 compute unit version, but also think yeah, this is kind of the way that things are going with gaming handhelds, where the APUs that are in those are getting faster and faster. We've seen Intel's integrated graphics on their Battle Mage uh, Arc setups is actually pretty competitive. It's getting very close to what AMD has. Now we've got the 8060S being included. It just seems like the budget GPU, the minimal performance category is being taken over by things that can be integrated into a single chip solution, not into a discrete GPU aspect. And we're also expecting something like this to happen from Nvidia. They're likely going to be dropping their own version of their laptop later this year that's going to have an integrated GPU. It's going to be essentially a beefed up Nintendo Switch with an ARM processor for uh, Windows users. So this is not going to save anybody any money, but it will kind of replace that performance category while allegedly likely making these companies a lot more money, which is uh, what it's about at the end of the day for them. And what this episode's about at the end of it is responding to your comments. So let's go and see what you had to say. Everest saying, AMD, we're not releasing 32 gigabyte 9070 XT. AMD releasing 9070 XTX 32 gigabyte. We'll see, we'll see. I had to take it with a grain of salt. Some people might want it, some people might not. Thom saying, the card that Jay's two cents showed was $900 at Micro Center is now 750 after Jay said WTF. Yes, uh, turns out that public pressure can cause companies to do things slightly differently, and here we are. Snafu saying, Asus, we know we don't have any $1,000 5080, so we at Asus are going to sell the 5070 for the same price as the 5080, so you can get the 5080 buying experience. It's a great world we're living in right now for GPU. It's perfect time to buy an RTX 3080 Ti. Robloxian saying, if the 9070 XT is launching at $700, I guess we're just going to have to wait for the ARC C780 to give us the long-awaited 4080 Super at 499 that gamers have been craving for years now due to how badly games have been optimized. And then also AMD dropping the 9070 XT at those prices while claiming previously that it would be at a competitive price means either they don't know what competitive means anymore, or they really don't want market share anymore, which people responded, AMD will miss the opportunity, miss an opportunity, which for AMD, that's their competitive, right? This has been the case for everything that has happened under Dr. Lisa Sue when it comes to GPU launches. They have the opportunity to give us a, a, a multi-class step up at a significant price reduction, and then they do not do it. They just play cat and mouse with Nvidia, trying to get close to their pricing, but not be quite as offensive. They are the more palatable option, but they are not the no-brainer option. And that just creates a situation where people don't want to buy them. When it comes to the, they don't want market share anymore, the theory that I've heard on this is that that is true because they don't make money from GPUs. They make money from their consoles. That is where the vast majority of their gaming income is coming from. And releasing the discrete GPUs is just a way to, to make some extra cash, but it's not their primary motivation. So why would they care about capturing market share? It's just about trying to make as much profit off of what they're selling on the side. And uh, this side of the uh, hot news is done. I'm done. I'll be back here for more of the house tech news tomorrow, maybe.